Thank you, Melanie. Happy Sabbath to all. Happy Sabbath. He washed our tears away. That's why you and me are here, right? That we may see. We may see God's mercy and love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Um, if you have your Bibles already in Matthew 5, I'll open it there, and um, just basically finishing up the Beatitudes, or what? Our attitude. The title of this study this morning is, Blessed Are You, The Last Beatitudes. As we have studied the Beatitudes before, our, or our attitude towards God's kingdom. And we welcome uh, our visitors and friends that are here, and um, also people that are watching. Um, hopefully my mom was able to uh, tune in today in California. It's a little bit early for them. Um, so welcome to you all. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful that today is the day that we are joyful in your presence. May your spirit Guide us as we study and delve into your words. May your words be spoken from my mouth and not mine, not myself, but yours to your glory. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So um, let's, uh, if you look at Matthew uh, 5, 1 through 9, it's just a quick review. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Poor in spirit, humbling ourselves able to seek the truth humbly with an open mind. And the next one is mourning. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mourning for our sins, true repentance, and not backsliding. And the third one, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek, gentle, our submission to God. And the fourth one, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hungering for righteousness, hungering for the character of God, to do what's right. Merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Forgiving others, others before ourselves. And six, um, pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Holiness, clear conscience or faithfulness. Number seven, peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Amen. Don't we want to be, like, be peacemakers? Amen. To console, be of the right mind, steady in faith, showing the character of God. The next two will be bring us to our key text. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye. Have you noticed? Instead of blessed are those, or blessed are they, now it switches to blessed are you. When man shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. It says, persecution and reproach await all who are imbued with the Spirit of Christ. The character of the persecution changes with the times, but the principle, the spirit that underlies it, is the same that has slain the chosen of the Lord ever since the days of Abel. That's Mount of Blessings 29.2. And, um, you know, Pastor Ben uh, was speaking about the principle, right, last Sabbath. And... Um, it says, the character of the persecution changes with the times, but the principle does not change. Amen. It says, persecution and reproach await all who are imbued with the Spirit of Christ. Do you have the Spirit of Christ? Amen. You will be persecuted. <laughs> we will. I will be persecuted. The last beatitude, this is only the beatitude that says, blessed are you or yea, a sudden shift directly to us personally. Let not the kind, this is from uh, Testimonies 129, um, 
8, it says, Let not the kind, unkind speeches of man hurt you. Did not men say unkind things about Jesus? Amen. You err and may sometimes give occasion for unkind remarks, but Jesus never did. He was pure, spotless, undefiled. It says, do not expect a better portion in this life than the prince of the glory had. When your enemies see that they can make you feel hurt, they will rejoice. And Satan will rejoice. Look to Jesus. We have to look to Jesus and work with an eye single to his glory. Keep your heart in the love of God. It's beautiful passages. This earth is dying. Do you agree? Yes. The nations are in unrest, as we've seen. Times of perplexity are upon us. Men's hearts are failing them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. Amen. But those who believe in God will hear his voice amid the storms. Amen. Amen. Saying, it is I. Be not afraid. That's Sons of the Times, October 9. And in Ephesians 5.11, it says, I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. If you have it there, say amen. It says, reading um, 8 through 14, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of what? Of light. For, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out, out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the darkness, but rather expose them. Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Whatever manifests is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Do we have walking dead nowadays? <laughs> we are to awake and see what's going on in this world. Redeeming the time. We who are waiting the Lord's return. Melanie mentioned redeeming the time and on Sabbath school today. We who are waiting the Lord's return must be energized in what time we have left in this world. We all have what? But a few left. Not much, folks. Not much. Former U.S. Secretary of State, uh, geopolitical consultant said, um, Henry Kissinger, wrote a book on world order. Have you, anybody read that or you've seen it? Uh, this is one of his excerpts. It says, religious unity had fractured with the survival and spread of Protestantism. The Protestant Reformation destroyed the concept of world order, sustained by the two swords of papacy and empire. Wow. What has stopped world order, right? But it's not going to stop. It's going to come. It's going to continue. Now we can look at the Protestant view. Protestant reformers identify Rome or papacy. We study the fourth beast, it's just a review. Daniel 7, 7, civil Rome, little horn, Daniel 7 through 8, uh, 7, 8, papal Rome. Last beast, Revelation 13, 2, global papal Rome. The last beast, the dragon gave him power and great authority, represents global Rome. The little horn. Mouth speaking pompous words represents papal Rome. The fourth beast, fourth kingdom from that statue is Rome, represents civil Rome. All three pointing to one system of belief and one structure of government to enforce this belief. I'm sure you read the news, um, you know, heard it from uh, talk radio, uh, buzzwords, right? World government buzzwords, common good. Solidarity, unity, oneness, 
fraternity, morality, humanity. I'm sure you all have heard these buzzwords. They will push every means to a global thinking, or our thought and aspirations should be what? Heavenward. Not things of this world. The Bible teaches us in Luke 12, 51. Let's open our Bibles there. Luke 12, 51. Jesus said, Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not, not at all, but rather what? Division. The Bible tells us to unite in Christ's teachings, bearing the good fruit. Only Jesus, only in Jesus we will find perfect peace. Amen? The powers of this world would like to unite all people and save this dying world. Jesus and his teachings are to have us look to a home that he has prepared for us in heaven. This world, be, this world will be made new after the millennium. I can't wait, folks. Amen. I'm tired of this world, aren't you? Amen. Let's go to John 18, 36 through 37. John 18, 36 through 37. It says what? My kingdom is not of this world. Um, this passage, uh, this was when Peter denies Christ three times and uh, he was in Pilate's court. And in verse 14 it says, I have given them what? Your word. What God gave to distinguish good from evil. He's given us what? His word. And his word is true. And um, let's look at Luke 21, 33. Does the word change? It says what? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not what? Pass away. Amen. Amen. And in John 17, 14, it says, And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I felt alarmed as I saw the Spirit of the Lord I'm um, sorry, this is uh, Councils for the Church. I felt alarmed as I saw the spirit of the world was controlling the hearts and minds of many who make a high profession of the truth. Selfishness, self-indulgence are cherished by them, but true godliness and sterling integrity are not cultivated. Ouch. We need this message, amen? amen. Don't be discouraged. We too keep on the path, keep on the faith, Eyes fixed on Jesus. Do God's people seek global unity? John 17, 16 says, They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. And it says, 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If, it, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Remember the Tower of Babel? The world what? United. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what did God do? Confused them and separated them, right? It says, in mercy, he confounded their speech. Amen. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's dry here. <laughs> It says, in mercy, mercy, he confounded his speech, thus putting a check on their purposes of rebellion. God bears long with the perversity of men, giving them ample opportunity for repentance. Wow. He gives us plenty of time. <coughs> what a wonderful Savior. He could have disseminated them right there and there, right? But instead, he gave them mercy. What a loving God. Do God's people seek global unity? It says, For all that is in the world is not of the Father, but it's of the world. 1 John 2.16 And the world passes away, but he death does the will of God abideth forever. Amen. So we can probably still make it, right? Amen. Amen. When he comes. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm looking forward to that. But we have a job to do. Uh, we've been asking for the Holy Spirit to guide us to share this message to Clemens.
and beyond, to your friends, to your co-workers. Revelation 16, 14, For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So what force is behind this global uni unity? Evil, right? One world system, goal, and consequence. It says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life. That's pretty staggering. It says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life. This is prophesied. Worshiping the beast power of man's laws will not be in the book of life. But there is a remnant. Amen? Amen. There is a peculiar people that will stay true to God's word. Are you that person? Are you, am I that person? Revelation 13, 14, it says, And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. This world power will deceive many, but there is a remnant. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. Revelation 18.23 For your merchants were the great man of the earth, for by your sorcery all nations were deceived. <coughs> this are pages 6.28. It says, Turning to disciples, Christ said, Take heed that no man deceive you. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and he shall deceive many. Many false messiahs will appear, claiming to work miracles and declaring that the time of the deliverance of the Jewish nation has come. They will be misled. These will mislead many. It says, take heed that no man deceives you, right? That's why we study God's word. We have to be faithful to him. First Thessalonians 5.3. It says, For when they say, Peace and peace, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, and they shall not escape. Are we nearing this event? Amen. We have to be watching and waiting while sowing the harvest. We cannot stop working for God. We have to keep on going, right? <clears throat> we, may have, we may be disappointed at times, that's human nature. But stay focused on him. Amen. God will see this church go through. Amen. After all, this is God, this is the, the church is God's what? Bride. Bride. These are behind the scenes. Um, papal agenda, global common good, and if you compare it to the UN agenda, they're the same. Global common good, global ceasefire, global climate change, global income. You may say, yeah, but so, some of them are good, of course. I, don't get me wrong. These changes are good. But it should be what? Focus to what? God's kingdom. This is the world's kingdom that they would like to unite. Two kingdoms, one here on earth, the other, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, I will what? Prepare a place for you. Have you th thought of your mansion in heaven? Mm -hmm. And we will what? Plant and grow vineyards, right? And have, uh, I'll go visit Pastor Bam and Terry and David and say, hey, what grapes are you planting? <laughs> Maybe I can taste some, some of that, right? And Annette and Franklin. <clears throat> What's that grape that grows here in North Carolina? The muscadine. Do you like that? No. <laughs> I tried it. I like the juice, but actually eating the fruit, not so much, right? Yeah, I like the, the seedless green <laughs> and the seedless red. Oh, man. Amen. <laughs> but in heaven, we will, all the fruits will be good. You cannot say anything that's bad, right? Yeah. We will have muscadine in heaven. <laughs> Who wants to plant muscadine in heaven? <laughs> there you go. 
You like muscadine? Oh, yeah. well. <clears throat> Thanks, Luca. <laughs> Let's go visit Luca, right? Let's uh, taste the muscadine. Um, I don't have time to tell this story. Six Seventh-day Adventist family remained faithful to God amid death threats and police arrest. This happened in um, Nagaland. Nagaland is located in far northeastern India, in borders of Myanmar on the east. Most of the people living in Nagaland are considered tribal people, individual ethnic groups distinct from the main part of India. Ha have you been there, Pastor? No. We're not that far. We're in the south. South. Okay. Christianity is the dominant religion in the region. That's good. And English is widely spoken as a result of the 19th century mission work, missionary work in the region. Although these Christians, Christians change denominations at will, it is often not without objections, but the majority Christian denominations in the territory. Nagaland Seventh-day Adventist School is located in Dimapur, the state's largest city. The story began when the six Sabbath-keeping families moved to the village to escape an insurgency crisis in their native region in 1966. For the first four years, life in the new village was normal. Then the adults and the families decided to officially join the Adventist church through baptism. Almost immediately, the other villagers began to cause problems. They told the new Adventists to recant their faith or leave. Several villagers made death threats against the Adventists, but the little group remained faithful to their beliefs. When nothing worked, the villagers convinced a local government official to sign an edict that the Adventists had to give up their faith or leave. Unable, under arrest, the next Sabbath, several police officers stood waiting for the Adventists at their homes after church. The police told the three adult men in the group that they were under arrest. The women were afraid, and the children began to cry. One of the adult men, Pan, told the police, We have not committed any crime or deserving arrest. If you want to kill us on, us on religious grounds, we are ready to give our lives. Amen. The police handcuffed Pan to his friend, Amunang, and placed them and the third man in the open back of a police truck. Pan's wife, felt sick to her stomach as she saw her husband being led away. But she remembered Jesus' promise in Matthew 5.10. It says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The police truck drove off to the region's main police station, more than two hours away in the city of Demapur, partway to the police station, <clears throat> Pan and Men Cheng watched in surprise as their handcuffs slid off their wrist, unshackling him from his friend. He showed his freed hands to the police officer, who asked how he had gotten the handcuffs off. What does that remind you of? Peter, Peter Paul, and Silas. He says, we did nothing, he said. It just fell off. <laughs> The policeman relocked the handcuffs and the group continued on the police station. The three Adventist men were led to a jail cell where they spent the next two days. On Monday, the police said they could go if they agreed to move to another village. The Adventists protested saying, you have not given us a reason why you have arrested us without an investigation and without any changes. The police could not reply and finally freed the men. Home for good. Back at home, the Adventists filled an appeal with the local authorities they asked to be allowed to live in peace in the village. Three months later, the authorities said the Adventists could stay in the village and told the other villagers to leave them alone. <laughs> God has a work for them. It says only six families moved to the village, but today, 84 families are Seventh-day Adventists. <laughs> That's almost one-third of the villages. 1,500 residents who now belong to the Amethyst Church. Pan Mei Chung never found out why the handcuffs fell off his wrist, but he said the incident reminded him in his hour of trouble that God was near. He said it was like a miracle. What kind of a sign that showed us that God was with us? 
Six Seventh day Adventist families remained faithful to God amid death threats, police arrest, and other harassment in northeastern India. As a result, 30% of the residents of their small villages are now members of the Adventist Church. Wow. It says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. But it says what? Rejoice and be exceeding glad. It's just not be glad, but what? Rejoice. Exceeding glad. Have you had that experience? Have you had an exceeding glad here on earth? But when we're in heaven, it will be even better. Amen. Unexpected gladness. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So if you follow Christ's teachings, we will be persecuted. Amen. But our life here on earth is just but what? A moment. To what God has prepared for us, everlasting life. This is my prayer.